Hi, I'm Tom Stephan from Gould's Water Technologies. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the Aquaforce EMT Packaged Booster System, assembled, tested, and programmed in Auburn, New York. Let's talk about some of the components uh, on an Aquaforce EMT. Uh, note that some of these components are going to be optional and some of the pumps that may be ordered uh, are also variable depending on your needs. So let's talk about some of the components uh, in this particular demo system. First, let's talk about the two VFDs, variable frequency drives with disconnects. Over here is your control panel, again, with a disconnect and a PLC or programmable logic controller. As we move down, uh, let's talk about the low suction pressure switch. So the low suction pressure switch is connected here that comes off of the suction manifold. Also, in this particular demo, we have a low suction pressure transducer. Some of the other components of the system are grooved fittings, so 304 stainless grooved type fittings. And on the pump side, again, for this particular unit, we have two ESVs, so vertical multi-stage booster pumps. So let's move on to the discharge side. And we see here we have two pressure transducers on the discharge, and one is a redundant transducer. Next, uh, again, on the discharge side, we have 304 stainless steel grooved fittings and also a thermal purge, as we can see on both pumps that are manifolded together. So now we're going to focus on the PLC. Again, the programmable logic controller, or you can think of that as a pump logic controller. Uh, but first, let's talk about a caution that we can see the sticker here and that has to do with not running the pumps dry. So we need to make sure that the pumps are fully primed and all the air uh, has been evacuated. So now let's go to the PLC itself and keep in mind that the station is pre-programmed from the factory. Uh, but today we're just going to go through some of the highlights of the PLC itself. So and again, it's like a mini computer, so I'm going to turn it on and it's going to take maybe a minute or so to boot up. So now let's focus on the PLC itself. One thing to note, if there are any adjustments or modifications that need to be made, you want to do that on the PLC as opposed to making any changes to your VFDs. So let's start with the home button, which is on the top. So you can see we're in the home screen already, and we're Xylem, date and time, booster, and aquaforce. You have tabs along the top, and notice that some of those are grayed out. If it's grayed out, it likely means that you need to put a password in, which we will go through. The top bar here is your discharge bar. So as I press on that, you can see the PV information or process variable. And in this case, we have three process variables. Process variable one, set point, one, two, and three. Process variable two, process variable three. So in this case, uh, we are um, operating as a constant pressure system, so our process variable is the signal from our discharge pressure transducer. So next we can see the two pumps that we have here, and this is a lead lag system, and indication here that both pumps are off. So by touching some of this information, uh, we can see pump information main number one, status, current power, frequency, starts, and runtime, and also the ability to reset the pump hour. The other thing uh, for information is you can press on the pump in order to run it manually. So let's take a look at the suction bar, and as the system is off right now, 
we can see that our speed is zero percentage, our suction zero PSI, but it also tells us the pump sequence two one. If you wanted to alternate that sequence, you hit your alternation button. Do you want to alternate current sequence? Press yes. And we can see that now our sequence changed, sequence one, two, so lead pump, leg pump, one and two. Other information that you can get is the trending screen. So I press on the trending bar and you can see information such as set point, speed, flow, power, suction pressure, and discharge pressure. And again, their system is not running right now, but that is our trending screen. To get back to the home page, press the top bar. Now I'm back to my home page. Notice some of your tabs are grayed out. So what we will need to do is log on as a supervisor. So I'm going to hit the service button. And again, notice a lot of these are grayed out. So I'm going to log on as a supervisor and the password is 1234. So the current user is a supervisor. So I'm going to go back to service and now I can see a lot of my tabs I'm able to use. The one tab that you are not able to use as a supervisor is the tab here called recipe. So let's start with quick setup. And notice we have quick setup one and quick setup two. Number of pumps, number of sensors, sensor span, uh, 300 PSI, sensor two type, sensor two span, set point. And you have, you can also move over to get to quick setup two. Uh, with your buttons here. And you have some system protection, high system pressure, and high system proof timer. Low system pressure, low system proof timer. Uh, what's really important there is if there is any proof timer that is set to zero, that means that that function is disabled. So if you ever do want to disable a function, just put a zero in the proof timer, as we can see here. Other types of protection, low suction pressure, again, low suction proof timer, zero in this case, we've got that disabled. Reset pressure, service call number. So let's take a look at sensor setup. Select sensor. Notice that uh, as we reviewed earlier, we have three different sensors. So we've got a sensor on analog input one, analog input two, and analog input three. Analog input one, that's our discharge pressure sensor. So if we take a look at analog input two, that is our suction pressure transducer. So let's take a look at number three, and that is our redundant discharge pressure transducer. So let's go back to service, and let's look at pump setup. Pump setup and motor setup. So we have number of pumps two and standby zero. Motor setup all of our motor information is here that should all be preset from the factory. Current, amperage, power, horse and a half motors, voltage is 460, frequency, and speed. Notice here we have the same pump motor size for pump two. Let's go back to service and look at system setup, speed control, 
And notice I have three additional tabs here, VFD setup, the PID, and all zone sensor fail. So uh, this is protection in case your transducer, in this case pressure transducers, fail. What do you want the pump to do? Do you want it to run and at what speed? Uh, so that's what all zone sensor fail means. So in this case, you get to set that up. And so you get to determine number of pumps to run. In this case, we want one pump. And the next is pump speed. At what speed do you want that pump to run? So in this case, it's in percentage. Notice here, zero percentage. Well, what we have to keep in mind is our system is uh, 30 hertz minimum and 60 hertz maximum. So in this case, zero actually means 30 hertz and 100% would mean 60 hertz. So it's a little tricky, but that's how the system uh, is today. So we're going to go back, touch the service button, and you can see additional parameters here for alarm setup, date and time, and again, almost everything is able to be uh, modified. So now let's just run the system and see what changes on our screen. So one thing here we can see that it's currently set to automatic. And so when I hit the start button, uh, everything will start. I can also change that to manual and run these in manual mode uh, by speed. So let's change that back to automatic and then let's start this system and we can see what uh, changes take place on your PLC. So I'm going to hit the start button, open up the valve, so we can see pump one changed so we can see that it's running and we can see some amperage, kilowatts and frequency so it's up to full speed. My discharge pressure is 3 and my set point is 30. So what we're going to see is pump 2 is going to be called to turn on to try to meet my demand. So pump 2 comes on We're currently both at 60 hertz. The multi-pump mm, system is synchronous, which means that when both pumps are on, they will operate at the same frequency. So let me close the valve a little bit. So we can see the frequency is the same for both pumps because they're in synchronous mode. So I'm going to close the valve completely. Both pumps are down to 30 hertz, which is our minimum frequency. and we can see both pumps are off. So we looked at the automatic mode. Let's take a quick look at the manual mode. So down here in the lower right, I can toggle between automatic and manual. Notice that once I hit manual, I see a percentage here. So I'm going to press start. I'm going to hit close. And so now I can run that pump manually and adjust the speed this way. If I can take it down. I 
I could nudge it up or I could bring it up with this button here. I'm going to close that and then stop. So one of the most common things that you may want to um, change or at least make sure uh, is your set point. So I'm going to go to service, quick setup, set point one, and it's currently 30 so I can make my changes. And so I've just changed my set point. And notice here it's changed set point 46, which is just read only screen here. So another way to, to modify your set point is just simply go to the set point tab. And we can see set point one, two, and three. Current set point is 46. So I'm going to touch on that, change that to 30. And so I've just changed my set point. You do have some options on your set point. It could be a fixed set point, which is how we're operating this package system. It could be a schedule, so you would have to put that schedule in, or it could be from a communication override. So thanks for watching our quick overview video of the Aquaforce EMT. For additional questions and information, you can go to the website goulds.com, uh, which you'll find all the IOMs and literature for the product, as well as uh, contact information uh, if you have any additional questions.